All right, so let's talk about a goodness of fit type problem. So this is one of the homework problems. And so for this example, a person randomly selects 100 different checks and then records the sense on that, All right? So a, a, a particular check is written and there's an amount, right? It's 134 cents, so 139 cents. Another check is selected and maybe it's, um, let's say that's 173 cents. Another check is um, $12 and 15 cents and so forth. What they've done is they've taken these cents values and they've said, okay, uh, is it between zero and 24 cents? Let's keep track of it. Zero and 50 or 25 to 50, 25 to 49 cents. And you just kind of keep track of it until you have a count. So we have frequencies of occurrence for the different values, um, number of cents that occurred on all of the various checks. If it's perfectly random, right? If um, the category, right, the cents portion between 0 and 24 is just as likely as the other categories for those 100, then, um, then you would expect these values to all be the same, 25, 25, 25. So we have then an observed list, but we also can formulate an expected, um, that, uh, an expected list. So we want to test um, whether or not observed is a real deviation from what was expected, right? Does observed fit? How well does observed values, those observed frequencies, fit with what is expected? Um, or is there any, at least one of those groupings, disproportionately high? So we need two lists that we want to put, you know, to put into our calculator. One list will be the observed values, and the other list will be the expected values. And then from those two lists, we're going to get the um, the differences between each one of the observed minus the expected values squared divided by the expected values and come up with a test statistic. Now our calculator is going to help us generate that test statistic and when we get that test statistic we're going to compare that value of our test uh, statistic to a certain critical value. And so the critical value that we're going to compare our test statistic to, once again, I'll draw my um, kind of my rubric, my setup here, and then I have my critical value that I, my chi-squared critical value, crit, chi-squared, and it's going to correspond to the 0 0.025, so the 0 0.025, so there's my, and then I'm going to go ahead and take my test statistic, and see where I fall. If I fall over here, oops, right, if that test statistic ends up, um, that's an, falling over to the left of the critical value, then that's not enough evidence, right, to reject the null hypothesis that those two proportions are the same. If it falls over here, then we are going to reject um, the null hypothesis. So let's go ahead and get the critical value. Um, the alpha is 0 0.025. So we have that there. And then we also have uh, how many different categories? One, two, three, four. Four different categories, so the degrees of freedom will be three. Right? Four minus one. And where those two intersect, right, if we go down this column and across this row, we have a critical value of 9.348. So our critical value is 9.348. So let's get rid of all of this. Our critical value is 9. 
0.348. And now we just need to figure out what our test statistic is and see if it's larger than our critical value. So what's our test statistic? We're going to use our calculator to help us generate those numbers. So let's go into our list. So our list is what was observed, list 1, 58, 18, 14, 10. And observe, and that, uh, rather expect it, will be that there's um, no real difference um, in the proportions between the categories. So 25, 25, 25, 25. Um, instead of doing it, 58 minus 25 squared divided by 25. 18 minus 25 squared divided by 25. 14, right? Instead of doing it manually, we're going to use technology to help us. We'll skip over to here. Let's jump over to our chi-squared goodness of fit test. We have list 1 observed. List 2, 25, 25, 25. 25. Those are the expected. Degrees of freedom, 3. And we're going to go ahead and calculate and it tells us that our test statistic is 59.36 so our test statistic we'll put over here it's um, equals 59.36 and since it's larger than our critical value um, our test statistic fifty nine point three six um, so with that we're going to um, reject um, the null hypothesis so when you reject the null hypothesis let's go ahead and right when you reject the null hypothesis There's evidence to support that at least one of the proportions is wrong, um, or there's insufficient evidence to support the claim that, um, or the null hypothesis that all the proportions are the same. And so you see this statement down here. There, the results appear to support the expectation that the frequency for the first category is disproportionately high.